has the right plan to fix the economy? U.S. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz is a Florida Democrat. Thank you, Congresswoman, for joining us. This, you, uh, this crazy, crazy economy <laughs> is the solution to fire the chairman of the SEC, as McCain says. Well, that solved the problem. He likes to fire people, by the way, McCain. He fires, uh, you know, he fires Rumsfeld. The war goes on. The same number of casualties. Now he wants to fire uh, his former colleague, uh, Chris Cox. I think the question, Chris, that voters have to ask is which John McCain should voters believe and on which day should they believe him? The, uh, the, the day that he said that the fundamentals of our economy are strong, which was Tuesday, or on Wednesday when he said, no, no, I was talking about American workers. Or how about on Tuesday when he said he would oppose a bailout of AIG, but then the next day said he supports it when he, because he didn't actually realize the impact that the failure of AIG would have on pensions and retirement funds. This is uh, John McCain proving over and over again that he is out of touch, that he doesn't understand what kind of impact the economy is having on working families, and even admitted a few months ago that he really doesn't have a, ter a terribly good grasp on the economy, which he continues to prove every single day. That's why we need Barack Obama and Joe Biden as president and vice president of the United States so we can move this country in a new direction. Let's look at the president who is president, George Bush, and what he said today very briefly. I'm not kidding. It was almost like a cuckoo clock. It was so <laughs> brief. He came out for like two minutes and then split without taking any questions, not giving any answers, not exposing himself to the kind of scrutiny most Americans would like to submit to the man whose desk has the buck stopping on it. Here he is, the president of the United States this morning. The financial markets continue to deal with serious challenges. As our recent actions demonstrate, my administration is focused on meeting these challenges. The American people can be sure we will continue to act to strengthen and stabilize our financial markets and improve investor confidence. What did you make of that statement today? I didn't make much of it. He, I think he really tried to avoid making any statement today, simply Absolutely. make himself visible for two minutes or so. I think he's desperately trying to avoid the direct accusation that he's been asleep at the switch, as has his entire administration. And, you know, we, we've got John McCain, the Republican nominee for president, who, you know, I mean, his big, uh, his big solution to the economic crisis we're in is to fire the SEC, uh, the SEC head. Uh, I mean, someone who proclaimed himself the, a deregulator, who, who fundamentally said he was a deregulator. There is no track record whatsoever on the part of John McCain okay. to be someone who has a commitment to shoring up the economy. He believes in deregulation, and that's what Americans could expect from his, him as president. It's the last thing we need right now. Remember Denzel Washington in the movie Philadelphia? He said, explain <laughs> it to me like I'm your grandmother, okay? Right, right. Explain to me what Barack Obama would do as president to deal with this economic crisis as if I were your grandmother. Explain. The, the, the kitchen table economics of this, that's what you're talking about, Chris. Barack right. Obama's economic plan would give a tax cut to 95 percent of, of Americans and would, ab would ra raise taxes only on people who make more than $250,000 a year. There are no taxes that would be raised for anyone who makes less than $250,000 a year. John McCain's plan would leave out 101 million Americans. And the, the bottom line is that Barack Obama understands that a gallon of milk is now four dollars and more, that it costs almost eighty dollars to fill up your gas tank, that that is real money and that we need to do things like investing in alternative energy research so that we can truly wean ourselves off our dependence on oil. So that when we have an economic plan in place, put in place by Barack Obama and Joe Biden, that it directly impacts people in their pocketbook on their day-to-day -day expenses. That's what we need in the terms of the leadership from a president. Well, you're on tonight, so I'm going to hit you with an ethnic question. I just got this story about a half hour ago. It is uh, your constituency. You have a lot of Jewish voters in your constituency. A whole lot, yes. I just got the word today that the Republic, a Republican-backed group, supportive of uh, John McCain, is push-polling. That yeah. dirty little trick of asking people things that are rotten and then ask them to vote, really, you're basically propagandizing. They're pushing the idea that Barack Obama is tied to Hamas in this latest push polling out there. What do you make of it? And it's aimed at Florida voters, Pennsylvania voters, Michigan voters, Ohio voters, New Jersey voters, where there's large Jewish number, numbers of Jewish voters. They're pushing the idea he's part of some terrorist operation. I think what's going on here is Republicans are divided, depressed, demoralized, and desperate. 
And so they have to resort to these type of, of tactics to scare Jewish voters and to v scare voters across America. It's a playbook that, uh, that we're very familiar with, and we're not going to allow them to lie to the American people and distort Barack Obama's record. He's been 100% on Israel. He stands side by side with Israel, would, would make sure that Israel's alliance with the, with the United States is strengthened, and the Jewish community is going to overwhelmingly support Barack Obama and Joe Biden. And you know why, Chris? Because because Jewish voters want a president of the United States that supports all of our values, not just some of them. And that's Barack Obama.